Hello and welcome to a new edition of Let's Talk um, on Chilean Football News TV with your host uh, Dan, Daniel Campos, Daniel Campos and with us uh, all the way in Sydney, Australia, um, huge Sydney FC and Universidad Católica fan, Michelle Morris. Hola Michelle, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, muy bien, very good. Um, thank you for your time um we need to obviously um uh what do you say just uh yeah um clear up with our audience that we're how much 14 hours away on the time zone yeah 14 hours different yeah massive um <laughs> so you're still on saturday i'm in sunday yeah correct so um <laughs> that's how it is uh that's that's how it all it all starts from from Greenwich Meridian, Meridian time, yeah, GMT. So uh, thank you um, for being with us, Michelle. Where do we start? You uh, you love Sydney FC, um, yeah. which is is, is is still a mystery. Um, how on earth can you go for that club? Um, and and what's worse, um, you love when you say Catolica. I mean, that's anyway. Of course. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, all right, I'll, I'll be serious now. So you like uh, Sydney FC, Unicea Católica, um, obviously La Selección Chilena, La Roja, uh, La Selección Peruana too, which uh, we'll go in detail, um, you know, the Socceroos, the Matildas. Um, you're a videographer and also a massive football, um, you know, fan in terms of these, the whole subculture behind um, being in the terraces. So, yeah, over to you. Tell us. Yeah. So, um, I was born and raised in Sydney. So, for me, following Sydney FC was just natural. Um, I live in, in between East Sydney and West Sydney. So, it really could have gone either way of me following Sydney FC or following the Wanderers. But... There was no way I was ever going to support Western Sydney. Uh, I've never supported Western Sydney anything in my life. So, um, yeah, Sydney FC was the team for me, the, uh, the Sky Blues. Um, I just loved them forever. And, yeah, I started getting involved with the active support um, I guess a couple of years ago. And I was very much like a jersey wearer. So, like, just wearing your jersey, wearing your scarf. Um, and then I started going to the games by myself and then just, yeah, meeting people and just filming like the, like what match day would look like, but just from the active. And then um, I spoke to someone who was in the cove, like, uh, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I can work with you guys and like film for you. And they were like, yeah, yeah, like sounds good. And then um, just started hanging out with them more and more. And then, you know, it got to a point where they were like, you can't wear your jersey anymore. You have to wear Cove merchandise. And I was like, okay. So I bought a Cove t-shirt and I just started wearing, you know, the hat. Like it just, it just became a thing. I, I have the gazelles. And for me, it's not so much about the, the fighting aspect, like the hooliganism. It's more about like the fashion of it. Like I really enjoy like the Fred Perry shirts, the Stone Island, um, you know, the jeans and the gazelles, like the Adidas and stuff. Like, I really like the, the fashion of it, but yeah, not so much big on the uh, being part of a firm and going out and, and fighting people for, you know, territory. That's, you know, not ours anyway. But um, yeah, I just, yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect. And um, yeah, I guess, it's it's funny that there's like three national teams that I support. So like that's a uh, oh, where is it? That's a, a signed jersey from the Matildas. Um, that I got like a couple of years ago, and I wore that jersey once, and then washed it, and then took it to a game and bought a new jersey so I could wear one, and then got them all to sign that one. And um, yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, so my dad's from Chile, my mom's from Peru, but I was born here, and that's why I have three national teams. Um, and lots of people get very confused because obviously Chile and Peru have a very long history, 
and not just in football, but just in life. And um, it's funny. It's very funny. And then when we have people come over, they're like, so Michelle, which team are you going to follow today? Like, are you going to go for Chile or Peru? But the thing is, and I have to say this on the record, I am now a citizen of Chile. So I kind of have to go for Chile more than I have to go for Peru. So there's that. Um, so now people will hopefully get off my back. Um, but yeah, and I guess that's where, um, Catholica comes into this. Like my dad, my grandfather went to the university and was like a big fan and he went to like all the games and my dad, he's a fan and he goes to the games sometimes. Well, he used to, now he lives here. Um, but it's just kind of, I don't know it was nice to have that connection with my grandfather. So like we would talk about the games and, you know, I'd wear my jerseys when I go see him or like my jacket or whatever. And he loves it. So yeah, it's cool to have something like that. And then my dad and I, when we went to Chile a couple of years ago, we went to the stadium, um, which was really cool. Like you can just walk in, like you can't just walk in to a stadium here in Australia. Like they're all like, locked up everything's locked up but we went over there and they were just like yeah you can go in and we just went in and just walked in had a you know took some photos or whatever and it was great and I loved it and I really hope that one of these days I get enough money so I can fly back and actually go to a game um, because that would be the dream well um on the record I'll extend the the invitation again um you know, you're most welcome in Santiago and, um, and yeah, visit, um, visit a match. Um, you'll obviously want to be in the, in the home section. Um, it's, uh, it's loud, it's rowdy. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say passionate, but, uh, I, I, I have a different belief on that word. I think it's just, just a word, um, and and passion is individual. It can't be so collective. I think um, yeah. um, the rest of the world misuses the word passion. Um, South Americans, when they say they're passionate with football, I don't agree. I think it's the word is vocational. It's um, you're born for it. It's a vocation. It's a calling. That's why yeah. it's not just a part-time job or a full-time job. It's um, you're born for it. So. Um, it's a reason why you can just walk into a stadium. Um, rules are rules, but there's a level of trust where um, if you go to the stadium, um, there won't be, you know, damage, um, um, you know, during the day or during the week. There will be during a game. Unfortunately, um, you know, South Americans can't control themselves on the terraces. So it does look ugly when you have fences and gates um you know even barbed wire but in saying that like a lot of the games here if it's a game against western sydney you i can guarantee you a game against western sydney or melbourne victory we have broken i don't say we as in me <laughs> i just want to add, yeah, do not do anything right. illegal but uh the, the, the chairs break you know you're standing on chairs they're plastic chairs that have no you know support or anything and you can't tell an active support group or a bunch of football fans to just to stop because they will get mad and they will go 10 times harder at you anyway. And so, and that's the, the problem with the, the police that we have here and the policing. Well, they police, just don't, police they don't uh, allow for anyone yeah. to have any fun. Correct. Um, and that's global. Um, it's not whether the police in one country or the other decide um, for themselves, um, they've got superiors, they follow orders, um, and, and that, that's global. And police in general don't like football um, because football yeah. is for the masses. Police are, are supposedly there to protect the masses, which um, um, only only a few do. There are only a handful of good, honest um, policemen, but the majority um, are not. And they go where the money is, and um, and all the the amount of violence that we see, that is uh, fueled by police, is just unacceptable. The racism, the violence, the um, apprehension, um, and the uh, yeah, the passive aggressive, and and the uh, 
and all those power trips. Um, it's no different in South America. Police um, have this culture where they need to, and you see it in Copa Libertadores, also Americana, um, the fights, um, you know, both are at fault, both the fans and police. And it adds more fuel even in Australia with the social fabric because it's, uh, it's viewed as, oh, you know, they're the immigrants, they're the second citizen, second rate citizens who play and support soccer and soccer is violent. But all those brawls and fights happen in the other sporting codes and the media cover it. So it's all very similar um, around the world. Uh, mm. Where else do we go? You're a videographer. Just how big, Michelle, yeah, yeah um, is football um, with, you know, television revenue and um, OTT, over-the-top technology in this digital age before, um, yeah, um, you answer my question and, and tell us a bit about yourself as a, as a videographer. Yeah, so I'll just quickly go into my videography stuff. Basically, I... Um, did a course at uni, did film and TV production, um, graduated, loved it, loved filming, um, have always really been interested in it. And then I kind of wanted to take that and do something more with football. Um, since I started getting like massively into it when I was like at uni as well. And um, yeah, so I just started filming for the Cove and at the moment we're working on a, on a big project with the active group. So that should be, a lot of fun and, and it's looking good so far and I've done a lot of stuff with this other group called the ladies league where we're just a bunch of girls who talk football and we've made a documentary we've um, done a bunch of interviews with certain players and um, yeah it's been fun and you know I'm always trying to to get new equipment and to to get better at what I do um, but it's a very expensive um, hobby so you know that's that's just how it is. But um, yeah, in terms of like how it is for Australian football on TV, we were doing really well for a number of years um, with Fox Sports. Um, but the last like few years, everything's just kind of gone downhill. The, you know, we, we have a, a deal with Fox Sports. Um, and I think with like ABC, where they'll show like one... A league game and one W league game like on a weekend. So they'll have like a, a Friday night A league game and like a Sunday afternoon W league game or something like that. And um, I find that there's a lot of problems with that. I think free to air is would be our best opportunity because not everybody has Foxel um, or cable television. So I just think free to air would be great. But the problem is the A-League doesn't make enough money to, to go on to free-to-air to be able to host it. And that's an issue in itself. Um, but people have been saying that they want Optus Sports to buy the rights to the A-League, um, which I'm still even a bit iffy about. Um, and I say that because I'm not so sure what their views are towards the A-League. Um, you know... Every, every time I watch their shows, it's just a, a lot of, like, negative comments towards Australian football, and it's very, like, marketed towards European football fans, which is fine. Like, that's, like there's always going to be a market for that. But if you're an Australian-based, you know, streaming service, then shouldn't you be promoting Australian football and instead of tearing it down and saying, this is all the bad stuff that's in it? Like, you can still talk about the negative, but, you know put that like as a minor thing and, and make sure that you highlight the positive because otherwise people are just going to be turned off from Australian football. And I feel like that's what's, what's happened a lot in the last few months with um, COVID-19 that people have just been seeing all this negative stuff about Australian football. And, you know, there is a lot of negatives to it, but I think there's a lot of positives. Like it's the most played sport in this country. And I think that we should take that and use that, you know, why aren't there grassroots kids you know, going to the games all the time because their parents can't afford to pay for the tickets, which is a whole other thing. There's so many issues that come in this, in Australian football that are just like so minor, but if they fix them up, like it, you could change the whole thing. But um, again, I, I don't think that they should go to Optus Sports because I just think that that's not 
going to solve an issue. It's just going to put a Band-Aid on something, but they're not going to make any money from it. Well, uh, so, great points there, yeah. Um, go on, you, you're going to um, add more. Yeah, no, I just think that, you know, whatever they decide to come up with, it should be something that's going to work with free to air because that's where you're going to get a lot of your audience. And that's, you know, it, it's super important to go free to air, especially in Australia, like, because that's where a lot of people are watching, you know, TV, especially when it's like rugby and cricket are all on free to air TV and they're like on big networks as well. So I think they should, I don't know. The problem is the Australian media doesn't like football. So there's no way that we'll ever get free to air on like channel seven or channel nine. Unless uh, the Matildas or the Socceroos are, uh, you know, playing at a World Cup match. Um, and then they decide to jump on on the bandwagon and, and, and bask in the glory. Um, it's very similar to how it is anywhere in the world, given the fact that, um, you know, we're all affected by COVID-19 and, and Australian football, much to, you know, similarity, similarities with the um, United States, where the MLS... Again, very similar and very different um, scenarios. Um, massive Latino and Hispanic, uh, you know, market, and they've even got a, a Spanish-speaking, um, you know, communications department in the MLS. So, you know, that's never going to happen in the A League. Um, Australian football hasn't reached its full potential um, in terms of talent. As you say, it's expensive to play. No one, nowhere, and no one in, in Latin America will pay to play. You know, in junior mm. football. You just play. You just get registered. All you need to do is bring your ID, your national ID, to identify yourself, and that's it. And wear the right gear. You don't pay to play, so that's um, detrimental. That's made football in Australia, um, you know, an elite sport. Football has never been an elite sport, and um, in Latin America, um, football viewing on television has become elite. Um, elitist where you need to pay to watch football so you've got all these massive uh, conglomerates like uh, Fox um, we're now owned by Disney Walt Disney Channel and your ESPNs so it's a massive game changer um, so the future is streaming as you said OTT over the top um, like the zone um, you know, and, and plenty of others that I just can't um, think of right now. And um, the Turner Group, um, you know, run in, in, in the USA, um, think of uh, CNN, um, they own Chilevision, um, CHV, and TNT Sports Latin America. So um, the Chilean Football League under CDF, um, CDF is also, um, you know, in a already in an, in an establishment um, um, on contract um, to, to broadcast a match um, during each, uh, you know, round on free to wear. So Chilevision, so that there's a bit of leeway there and a bit of an idea where that can be done in Australia. And uh, what's done in Europe, it's also um, pay TV, but some games are also, um, you know, on free to wear, or the 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 all the other alternative is yeah, you know, have it like a again OTT like Netflix. Um, you watch it on your phone, on your tablet, on TV, on your smart TV, or go to a restaurant, go to a pub, and watch it live with with mates. So, um, you know, it's just a changing environment. Any more um, to add on that topic, Michelle? Yeah, and you're you're a videographer. It's it's you know. It's your... I mean, I think part of the problem as well is that this lack of advertisement for the game, you know, they will have ads for rugby and for the AFL, you know, coming out like months before the league is about to start. Whereas the A-League, because it's right at the tail end of rugby and AFL, Fox Sports doesn't want to promote it. They're, you know, they're, no, 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 no. Like, we have to promote the grand finals. And so you'll get an A-League ad a week out before the A-League is supposed to start, which is to me absolutely ridiculous. Like 
Why not promote the sport that is going to be on your network for people to watch so they know that, it, that, that it's on? Like, it's just, it seems ridiculous. Um, one year, they had a whole campaign and I think the FFA worked with it and it was called, um, you got to have a team. Basically, this kid called Yoshi went around to all the different clubs in Australia and New Zealand and um, it was like, yes. Don't forget the Kiwis. You know, I got a, yeah, I <laughs> can't forget them. And um, he basically went around and was like, this is um, Sydney FC. This is Western Sydney Wanderers. This is Melbourne City. Like, um, let me show you, like, let's see why I should pick them to be, uh, for that to be my team, right? And so he does all these cool videos with them and they would just like make them really short and they would come up on commercials like on TV and stuff, right? And they had billboards, they had bus posters, they had advertisements everywhere. And this was a 2016-17 season. And this season was incredible, not just because Sydney FC went almost completely undefeated, except for that one game that I will never talk about. But, you know, they won the grand final and everything. It was a really good season for Sydney FC. But um, it was a good season for the crowds. Like, it, numbers were, were looking good. People were there. People were watching on TV. Everybody knew that the, the A-League was on this season because there was advertisements. And then the next season, they recycled the ad and it just it didn't work. And then the season after that, they just completely forgot. And it just, that, that's the problem is that either they'll do something really good and then they'll just get lazy and they just don't do it or they just don't have the money to do it or they don't have whatever. But there's always an excuse and there's always a reason. Well, and it's just, I don't know. Behind, I think that they should put more effort into advertising the game. Behind money, um, revenue, you know, streams and funding, you need ideas and the ideas put into structures. So as, as much as they sound beautiful, you know, from, you know, in writing or, you know, from the mouth, um, you've got to implement it. You know, actions speak louder. So um, as you said, they got lazy. They didn't um, become creative enough. With the advertising, you've got to have a, a strategy. Um, and in cases like South America and Europe, the marketing is a different level because, and the advertising, because you don't need to advertise the sport because it's passed down from generation to generation. It's in the DNA. So um, you need to market um, in a different way. How? Well, you've got to market you know, a new product in the season, market, say, maybe a jersey market um, a new referee that will feature in the season whether she's female or male market uh, you know different ideas like uh, you know a new a new redesigned stadium or VAR is coming to town so you market small things you know you market the fact that um, the game now has changed you know its rules from the IFFHS um, so it's fascinating how in different parts of the world, marketing and football, um, you know, changes and and the fa and, then, and just like you said, the fabric. You mentioned all these other sporting codes, and um, they unfortunately, uh, you know, are in are in the Aussie DNA when when football has this huge potential and it's the only world game. It's the only world game that that you know Australia just takes this massive insular you know approach and and actually acts all arrogant around around asia when asia is the biggest market in, in world football it's not europe europe is a centralized one yeah so great points there how do you link that with um you know the television and football um to the fact that yeah you um you are a videographer you you're in the the women's game um silly question stupid question Women's football or men's football for you? Because well, which one do I prefer? Well, mm, that's a silly question with a silly answer. But the question would be, what does a women's game have that the men doesn't, uh, and vice versa? Because um, you mentioned the ladies league. Um, you know that's got its that's got its uh, niche, um, its demographic. And then as a Sydney FC fan, you've got another demographic. Mm. They're two different worlds, correct? Tell us. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'll say that the men's game has that the women's game doesn't have is this idea of um, 
So that act, so one active support is is a big thing. The, the, the men's has it, the women's just doesn't have it. Um, and two, um, at a men's game, it is fine to like swear at a game, and it is fine to get angry. But at a at a women's game, you cannot be angry and you cannot swear, and everything has to be family friendly. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It drives me up the wall because at a football game, the players on the field are getting angry themselves, right? Those, those girls, they, they, they'll be swearing at each other on the field. It's just that everybody in the crowd is like, I don't know, like a six-year-old girl or something. And so you're not allowed to swear and you're not allowed to get angry. And you're not allowed to drink. And you're not allowed to do anything that you can do at a men's game. And that's what frustrates me. What a women's game has that the men doesn't have is that there is um, more personality, I feel, in the players. I feel like they can kind of get away with, you know, having um, a personality in, in their interviews. They can, you know, get away with saying, you know, certain things or whatever. Like, they don't have to be, like, so strictly robot and media trained. Um, I feel like a lot of the men's players are very, like, you know, they're taught to say something and they'll say that and they won't say anything else. But... Um, yeah, but I feel very much angry at the fact that I'm not allowed to swear at a women's game because I'll do it anyway. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to some old man tell me what, what I can't do because I'm going to do it anyway because I'm going to get angry because the referee obviously did something wrong. Um, he might have got the, the right call, but obviously it was wrong because uh, it went against my team. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, that's, it frustrates me. Let me swear at a game. Let me get angry. Let me sing. Yeah, that's, that's part yeah. of the, the banter and the folklore in football. Um, and whatever happens yeah. on the pitch, you know, stays on the pitch. Um, now, um, you know, I need to put this out there. Um, Catolica women play your, your, other, your other club, your other half. Um, they play, uh, what do you call Unfortunately, you know, we're in 2020 and the, the, the first team uh, still plays on Calopoquindo pitch number two, pitch number three, pitch number 19. And it's uh, disrespectful. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's machismo. And, um, you know, they, they have to play where, where, where it should be, you know, at the main stadium. Um, so... Um, there's still things to, to, to follow. Sydney FC, um, including Shay Evans, who I coached when she was 11, up in the Northern Territory um, in Borolula. Um, they, correct me if I'm wrong, they play in Cogra or they play at Leichhardt Oval? Both. Both, right yeah. now. I was shocked a while back when, um, you know, you told me that uh, off air that Sydney Football Stadium has been knocked down temporarily for, for, for reconstruction. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's a stadium. That's, uh, that's where it all, all began for me. So, you know, having been born across the road from, from that stadium, um, Michelle, w what else? I mean, we've touched on, you know, um, television in, in football, the fan culture. Mm. Tell us about the fan culture. I mean, yeah, it's quite, it, it really varies. Like, so, you know, if I'm going to a men's game, um, like a club level game. So if I'm going to go watch like Sydney FC play, um, usually if it, so if it's like a big game, like if it's a derby um, or a game against Melbourne victory, you know, people meet up at the pub and because I film for them, I usually bring like a little camera. It's got like a gimbal on it. So it's, everything's like stabilized and I'll film like, you know, the, pub antics or whatever and if there's a march it's always great because you get really nice footage from it because everybody's like in unison and everybody's walking together um we got our our code banner at the front um but yeah usually match day is just pub walk to the stadium whenever you get the chance and then um you know get another drink at the stadium which is very expensive um and then yeah, you head up to, to your spot and you go to the terrace. And, like, if you're in the cove, like, there are people who have, like, their spot. Like, that's where they stand and you don't touch that space. And um, – but I hate Cogra. 
I think Cogra is awful. I think it's not a place to watch football. It's the worst. Um, the Cove is so high up and far away from everything. Where at Allianz, we used to be like quite low and quite close to them. Um, Leichhardt isn't so bad because we're quite close to where they are. Um, I like Leichhardt a lot more than Cogra. I just don't like the traveling to get to Leichhardt because it's like a bus and then a train and then the the light rail and then another 20 minute walk and it's like two hours. Um, so not a fan. Um, I can't wait till we get Sydney Football Stadium back because then it'll only be like an hour to get there from mine by public transport. Um, and it'll only be like two buses or like a bus and then the light rail. So can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, match day, that's pretty much what it is. It's just like a long journey to get there. And then I usually just skip the pub because I don't want to have to like walk any more than I have to. And I'll just go to the stadium and then, um, yeah, just film whatever I can, um, during the game. Um, I, I will say this one thing that I get really frustrated at, um, with like Australian football fans is that if we can see the goal, like people will just stop singing and they will just be quiet and I hate it. And I'm yelling at everybody. I'm like, you keep singing. Don't stop because yes. somebody just scored a goal. Like you gotta, you gotta support yes. your team. You gotta keep, keep going. The chance. The chance. Hay que, yeah, seguir, it's, it's gotta... hay que seguir cantando cuando uno va perdiendo y no cuando se va perdiendo. Eso se llama, weón, es tener sentimientos. So, you know, um, you're losing and you have to sing um, even louder. Yeah, and they don't get that. And I'm trying to... It's football culture. I'm trying to bring it in. I'm trying to bring it in. I've, you know, I've like, made my way into, like, you know, the group of the, the cove. Yeah, you got to weave... Now, um, with your magic. Exactly. Um, but it's one thing that I've, you know, been wanting to do a lot as well as like the women's game is to to have an active support group and to try and get that started as well for the women's because um, they they love it. The few times that the Cove has been there for the women's games, um, they absolutely love it. And sometimes it feels like they appreciate it more because because they never get it. So when they get it, it's like a big deal. And that kind of sucks. Like the fact that, that all they want is just people to come to their games, you know, and to just support them and to see them win, um, support them in their losses as well. And it's just like that, like, that's what I want. Like we do that for the men's and we're one club. It's not Sydney women's football club. It's Sydney football club. You know, everybody's Sydney FC and I think we should be supporting them. Um, and um, you wanna, you and, wanna, you know, and I say that for all the codes, you like get for, rid of, for all the teams, you know. You want to get rid of that, that stale, you know, very neutral, cold, um, you know, feeling and experience at a game when, you know, Sydney FC encompasses everything, correct? Yeah. And be more active. We win um, everything. Well, um, there's another area in Australian football, you know, with... with Futsal, you know, there should be an A-League for futsal. So in your case, you'd have your club with a futsal team, a beach football yeah. team. Um, and, and well, their reluctance to a second division, that's unheard of, you know. Um, you know. I think they're just trying to figure out how to work with the MPL with a second well, division. Well, it's not, it's not because hard. Because I think, it's yeah. It's not hard. And um, we're, in, we're in COVID-19, um, which is the best time to to fix all your problems. Um, here in Chile, uh, we've got issues with, with just health and safety, um, you know, so players, are, you know, from all clubs are returning slowly, um, you know, to, to team training, but they're, they're all training at home. Um, the idea is, that, you know, on the uh, last day of July to to, to to, to, to get back and running at the season going, but where? And it's probably an idea to play up north in the one city or in the one region in different cities and just play it up there, um, which is sort of like the idea. I always used to say, build an island in Australia and just put all the AFL, all the rubbish, the league and the union, the cricket in an island so they can just, well, Australia is an island, but a smaller island just away from <laughs> mainland continent. Because oh. uh, I just find them, I find them uh, uh, like a 
like a um how do you call it like a like a cancer like a tumorous um malignant cancer because it's a world game it's a world game and these i think we should get rid of afl completely well it's one of the reasons why i won't ever live there again i'll only go on holiday um so the link with on holiday come visit me sure sure um <laughs> but uh i've got to be careful not getting lost and and uh, on the train, <laughs> I'll end up in Gosford or somewhere, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So probably around the North Shore, Karingai area, correct? Somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, um, yeah, I got some memories of Gladesville and Ride and when the Northern Spirit were up there in Christie Park where all the technology companies are. Um, yep. Yeah. Good good old days. I'm, I'm of the generation of Mark Milligan and, and Luke Wilkshire and, um, they ended yeah. up being Socceroos. Um, so yeah, we were in the in the Super and Premier Leagues of New South Wales. Um, strong teams there. Um, there were some Australian Chileans, some Australian Argentinians as well. Um, if you're watching, you know, um, yeah, you know, Vasquez and um, Quinones and Cardoso and Cabrera, um, Campos and yeah, Gutierrez Gonzalez. A few a few Hispanics. Um, in, ge- in that in that generation, so yeah, you know, Australia's always had massive uh, potential um, in talent. Um, Michelle, and for everyone um, listening and watching, um, in the early nineties, um, a couple of Australians arrived at Colo Colo, um, same as in Catolica, Catolica, uh, Marcelo Peña, who grew up in Sydney's southwest. Um, in uh, you know at, at Catolica he played uh, for Catolica Audax Italiano um, Colo Colo as well um, and uh, well, I, I did interview him in Melbourne when he was assistant coach at Boca one of the biggest clubs in the world Boca Juniors um, yeah so grew up in in Sydney Southwest played for the Chile um, B team against the England B team in 1998 in Birmingham. Um, historic win there. And um, and then we've got a Colo Colo, um, a, a tall defender born in Darwin, Dion, Dion Baye. Um, he played in the 1993 Under-20 World Cup for Chile. Um, you know, alongside big names, Dante Poli, Sebastián Rosenthal, who, who had a a brilliant career cut short by injury featured at Glasgow Rangers uh, at one stage with Paul Gascoigne straight from Catolica straight to Rangers. Fantastic player. Um, so, you know, great defender, Dion Valle, um, you know, ended up finishing his career at Perth Glory and, um, and Blacktown City in the old uh, what used to be Premier League before the NPL. And John Crawley. Uh, well, Andy Vargas, um, you know, if he's watching or listening, um, in the youth team for Colo Colo from Melbourne, Roddy Vargas is a older brother from from the Victory, uh, Melbourne Knights, and uh, yeah, his time at Colo Colo and, and John Crawley, um, goalkeeper, Colo Colo, Lota Schwager, um, and uh, yeah, you know, then um, playing for uh, Blacktown City, the Central Coast for a bit, and ended up as uh, you know, it was it was pretty much destined as a goalkeeper coach and formed uh, uh, a, a huge responsibility for Matt Ryan, who we know where he's playing at Brighton in the English Premier League. Now he's at the Socceroos. Um, tell us a bit about um, Sydney FC and and um, uh, and the the Hispanic, you know, or the Latino kind of you know connection. Is there do you see a bit of that, um, you know, in the act of support? Um, do you would you like one? Um, you know, in the team. I mean, Milos Nikovic plays like a South American, but he's Serbian. Um, <laughs> we had Nick Carl there. Um, you know, who I understand is now retired. But we had Alex Broske, um, yeah. Uruguayan, to, uh, Uruguayan Aussie, Uruguayan. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about you know how Sydney FC can be Sydney. Football club. <laughs> yeah. Well, so John Crawley was also our goalkeeping coach while Graham Arnold was around. And um, he transformed Andrew Redmayne from 
being this tall, lanky, skinny guy, you know, you know, second string goalie to being, you know, an incredibly talented goalkeeper, you know, saving penalties in a grand final, which is incredible. Um, and so I just think, you know, John Crowley is incredible at what he's done. Like, well, I mean, just look at Matt Ryan, like he's, he's done a good job. If you see John Crowley, habla en español porque habla chileno. He speaks, he speaks Chilean. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I feel like Sydney FC's active group is very European. Um, a lot of the people there are from, you know, Croatian descent, um, Greek, you know, are, are, they're very European. Um, there's not a lot of South Americans that are within the the active a lot of south americans are out in western sydney they're at the they're out west yeah yeah they're they're all out west and you can see it because they all have like they're, they're the west the rbb's band is literally called la Banda. and every time i see them i hate it because i hate them and i just like want to throw a rock at them or something um but i hate it because it's so south american and it's like it's it's what i want but like we'll never get it here because this is eastern sydney like this is a very different area um it's, it's a little posh for all of you out there who don't understand <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's the latte drinkers and oh. the bmws oh. and uh all the and the stone island yeah stone island all yeah. the vessels yeah. anyway yeah hey. and um the but yeah in terms of players i really wish that we could get more like south american players in um, like you said, we have Alex Brosk and he's, well, he's retired now, but Brosk, Brosk, I love him. They say Brosk. Yep. Yep. They all call him Brosk. Um, and then you have, um, Anthony Caceres is how they call his name here. Caceres. Yeah. Um, Caceres Anthony Caceres. And he's, uh, Uruguayan. And, um, I think he's also very much underrated. I think he's an incredible player. Um, who just doesn't get the minutes that he deserves. Um, but he's been playing a lot more and he scored an absolutely banging goal against Melbourne Victory um, in Melbourne. And it was just a beautiful moment. Um, but yeah, I I always want there to be more South Americans. We've had Bobo, who was Brazilian, um, and he was the top goal scorer for Sydney FC. Um, I think he still holds the record with 27 goals, I think, uh, in one season or something. I can't remember. But um, I think that the problem with South American players in Sydney FC, in our club, is that it's the, the culture is so different. Um, and, like, people always bring up the language barrier thing. But, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of players who can deal with the language barrier. Everyone speaks the same language when you're on the field anyway. Um, exactly, exactly. I mean, you look at once upon a time, Juninho at Sydney FC, Juninho, you know, Juninho Paulista, amazing. In the first years, um, Alessandro Del Piero, you know, with that, that flair and touch, even though he's not South American, but he is Latin, he's Italian, one of the best in, in, in world football history. Um, so there have been, you know, the Panamanian, Yairo Yao, um, you know, from Panama um, at Sydney FC. Maybe it's it's probably a bit of a uh, work, you know, Fabio as well, the Brazilian Fabio, a um, bit of work with, 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 an, with an agent. Um, you're, you're right. It's a culture. It's very, you know, Europeanized. Um, and yeah, it's... and I feel like part of it is that, like the club has, I don't know. I feel like people think that South American football players are very like, um, not pretentious. They're very like, you know, they have an attitude to everything. And I feel like that's what, you know, maybe people see like, you know, from Sydney FC, maybe that's what they see when they look at South American players. They're like, Oh, this guy's going to just be trouble. He's just going to be, you know, wanting to, the, the ball all the time and wanting to score all the goals and won't be a team player and stuff. And I'm like, there are players on our team already who are like that, you know, so. It's uh, it's an ethnic divide there, clearly. Um, you know, 
the stereotype. Yeah. The stereotype that Latinos don't pass the ball, they hog. Um, and as you say, there are players who are hogs. So, well, as a player um, in Australia, uh, coaches at trials or whether they're scouting, they say, oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, okay. He's South American or of heritage. He's too short. Um, but uh, Lionel Messi isn't a metre 90. He's not a metre 90. And Messi, Messi's father was going to migrate to Australia. So um, everything else went, you know, another direction and ended up, at, you know, um, getting the, the hormone treatment at Barcelona and moved to Spain. Messi would probably be, probably, in the NPL because he's too short. No, he doesn't pass the ball. Had he moved to Australia, yeah. that's the culture from the from the co- from the coaches, and it's disappointing here in Chile where there are coaches, you know, implementing a a culture or a playing style or playing it long. It's 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 a it's a different scenario where here there's too much dribbling and they need to pass the ball more. So teams that pass more are winning, like you know, Católica. Or in the women's Santa Omoni and Colo Colo. So uh, tell us the last uh, encounter late last year between the Matildas and La Roja Femenina at Parramatta. Oh, oh, what a fun day! That was actually one of the like best days that I've had. We lost, right? We lost two one, but I had so much fun. Like, so hang on, hang Matilda's on, who, who, hang on, hang on. But who's we? Because you, you know, people like you and I, there's thousands who go for both countries. So, <laughs> well, I was going for Chile. I had my red shirt. I had my, I had my flag, everything, bro. There's like a, it's, they put me on TV singing the national anthem with me holding my flag up. And I didn't even notice until someone sent me a photo. And, and, and then like, you know, the anthem, right? Come on. Yeah, I do know the anthem. Of course, I wouldn't sing the anthem if I didn't know it. What a relief because you'd be surprised there's so many who have the nationality um, by heritage or, or born and then they barely know it or they barely speak Spanish and they believe they are so. Um, so you're in the active supportive uh, end where, you know, Fernanda Pinilla got out a, her little political message, which I don't disagree, yeah. but I don't disagree, but you don't do it at a, at a FIFA sanctioned match. Um, so tell us. Yeah, so, um, one, it was just a beautiful day. It was like a perfect day for football, like sun, blue sky, um, not too cold. It was great. It was perfect. It was just everything that I needed. And, yeah, I met up with my friends at the pub. I was the only Chilean there because everyone there was, like, all for, for the Matildas. Um we had a drink and then we walked over to the game and I'm there with my flag and singing and jumping on the street and, you know, being, being a pest. And then, um, the, the group didn't form until like the end of the first half. So I'm just like, kind of like wandering around the stadium trying to find like where all my people are so I can like hang out with them. And then, yeah, first end of the first half, they're right next to where the Matilda's active support is. And so I go down all the way to the front. So like, I'm like on the barricade part and um, yeah, we, we just start singing and I'm like banging my hand on this thing to like get some noise happening. And it was so bad that my hand all here was bruised for like two days afterwards. And then, um, but yeah, it was fun and everybody was just having so much fun. And then, Obviously, we scored and everybody just went wild. And I knew no one there. I didn't know anybody there. But I was just having so much fun with all these, like, random people. And um, and then, uh, yeah, at the end of the game, they all came over to us and was, like, giving everybody high fives. I did ask Enla if I could have her gloves. And she said no. But at least I asked. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I went to Adelaide to watch them play, which was a whole new experience as well. Like... Um, the the community there was much more apparent than it was in Sydney um, because they organised this whole thing. It was like, okay, we're going to meet up here. We're going to do this. And I just messaged some random person. I was like, oh, can I come? Like, where is this? And then they were like, yeah, yeah, come along, blah, blah, blah. And so we go. I had my face painted. Um, I had an empanada. 
Yeah. Uh, I think I had another beer and then we all walked together um, to Cooper's. Big shout, and... big, big hello to Maria Jose Cote Rojas in Adelaide. Yep, go on. Oh, yeah, she's there too. I met her girlfriend in, in Adelaide during her, that whole thing as well. Her wife. Which is really cool. Wife? Are they married? Yep. Oh, well, yeah, well, I met her and she was super cool. And I was like, oh my God, I was like, I just want a jersey. That's all I wanted. Um, and then I was also really angry because um, she's not on the squad. And I was just like, I don't know. I think that's a whole other issue, but she deserves to be on the squad because she's probably one of the better players. And um, yeah, I went to the Matildas Open Training, um, went to, um, we went to the game and everything. And it was just, it was fun. It was so cold though in Adelaide. And this is when Australia was burning. Like Sydney was on fire um, with like a bunch of bushfires. It was like 45 degrees and... Adelaide was like 13 degrees and freezing and all I had was a very thin jacket was not prepared well for Adelaide it is a continent and Adelaide is windy Adelaide has amazing wine and all that wind goes out to southern to to you know the southern part of Australia to Victoria so yeah, yeah you know we're both originally from Sydney and Australia view us as snobs and it's probably true but anyway, it is the big smoke of Australia, the big apple. Um, I'm surprised you didn't mention that save by Natalia Campos. You know, oh, denied okay. Sam, Sam Kirk. Come on. This was the moment. I was just like, I could not believe it. I could because I knew Sam Kirk would miss the penalty, right? Really? Okay. Tell us why. Yeah. Tell us one. Because Sam Kerr, Sam Kerr can't score penalties. I don't know why they keep giving her the penalty kick when she cannot score from them. Give because, it to someone else. Who because she's a, global, she's a global superstar, but you're right. She can't score the penalties, not because she can't. She needs more practice. And for penalties, yeah. um, penalties are luck, but penalties are practice. Penalties are about, well... Placement or power? And she went, She opted for placement. And what happened? And then Nati Campos dived. Bam! Big save. Boom! I was jumping and screaming. And I was like, take that. Suck on that one, Sammy. Not really. I didn't say that. No, really. But I was very much like... Great. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Great performance by you just now. Um, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you know... Um, Natalia Campos, uh, you know, applying her trade in Spain, she denies, um, you know, the Chelsea forward. Um, Endla, Endla flew back to Paris. So, um, yeah. yeah, poor Adelaide, they didn't get to see Endla. But um, uh, the reaction from, from Chileans were that uh, it's a beautiful boutique football stadium. Tell us a bit about that. Hindmarsh. It could be. Oh, yeah. It's great. Come on. I, I, Allianz I and Coopers, come on. SFS, Hindmarsh, come on, come on. I'm so used to calling by their, their, their yeah. sponsored names. Yeah. You know, I'm Hindmarsh, kidding. yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, Let's go. It is great. It is a good stadium. Um, it's really small, um, but it's, it's cool. Like, it's, it's a proper rectangular stadium. Like, you know, like, no one else is going to be there other than, like, a football team is going to play there. Um, and it's all like decorated for Adelaide United. Um, so, which is really good. Um, Cause it's like one, like it, it's a, it's a stadium for one team. Like this team is the only like users of that stadium, which is great. And I think it's something that more teams should have, but um, they don't. And um yeah, I just I I, I like Time Marsh. Um, I think Bank West though is probably our best, um, the best stadium that we have at the moment because they got the safe standing. You putting your hoodie on. <laughs> yeah, I have to get a get a wrap up uh, soon as a as um, part of that you know subculture of, yeah. of, of the terraces. Go on. So uh, Bank I West. I love the terrace. Yep. Bank West is great. Parramatta. Um, they've got their, uh, yeah, in Parramatta, they've got their, um, their safe standing section. And 
Um, I've never been in it because that's like for the RBB and there's no way I'm going to be anywhere near the RBB. Um, but I have been in it like, like in the next spot for where, when the Matildas play and stuff and it's fun. It's good stuff. Um, but I will say this, my favorite piece of commentary that I've ever heard was, um, at the 2016, 17 grand final, Simon Hill dreams have come true in sky blue. Uh, beautiful moment. And I'll say that I cannot wait to get back into the terrace because I miss it. I miss jumping. I miss screaming um, and singing and supporting my team. And one of these days I'll be back, um, but I will not be fighting. I'll, and I'm not wearing this to a game because I don't want this to get ruined. And <laughs> so I spent a lot of money on this. And you'll be without the plaster. Yeah, well, no, no more cast. I'm back to running again. So No more cast. Great news. It's um, obviously something that um, it's taken away. We're taken away a bit of uh, you know, a bit of our our schedules going to work and leaving home because we have to stay home. It's the reason why at the bottom of of the screen we've got you know get out in casa, um, stay mm-hmm. home, get out in casa. Um, we still have you know COVID nineteen going around. Um, Michelle. Um, anything else that you want to add? Some humour, some, I don't know, some football stories, some observations. Uh, I, I love the part else? of digital TV for the future of football. Yeah, I mean, oh, my dad's outside. Um, yeah, I, I just really hope that the FFA can, um, oh, my God, sorry, my dad's outside and he's the hose, like the tap is right outside my bedroom. And well, so now you can just hear water. Well, he's, um, he's a groundskeeper, you know, <laughs> yeah. for the main pitch. Um, uh, but I think, yeah, I really hope that the FFA uses this time wisely to think, you know, um, what we can do to better the game here, you know, whether that's, you know, coming up with a second division or, you know, spending more money in terms of advertising, um, or just allowing us to be wild and use flares all the time. Like, let's just rip a flare because I think that is the essence of what football is in Australia. Flares. That's all they want. But, um, yeah, I hope everybody's staying safe and obeying the the rules to each of your, I don't know, your country or... It's yours as well. You're, you're a citizen too. Um, yes. Well, I mean, this is for, for just in general. Everybody's country is different. Our country is much more relaxed than um, the way, way you are currently. Yeah, way laid back. Way laid back. Too laid back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, we've got parts, like almost no cases now. So uh, pay, Parts of Iquique, well, in fact, Iquique, Santiago, and now Viña del Mar and Valparaiso. So it's uh, not... Not pretty at all. Um, muchas mm. gracias por tu tiempo. Um, de verdad, thank you very much. Um, yeah, there'll, there'll be plenty of other stuff off air, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll have you back. Um, all the best with your um, filming and video projects. I mean, do I need to really wish you all the best? I mean, you are, you know, you, you are the best um, and, and one of the best there. So just uh, weave your magic. Weave your magic, have some personality, um, stamp your authority. Don't then, you know, and that's for anything, anyone, anyone in the women's game. I keep telling, um, you know, people in, in women's football, don't don't sell yourself short to to uh, someone else in in football just because they're men. Because um, there's too many egos flying around, and people with big egos, you just gotta pinch them or punch them, pinch or punch, <laughs> and deflate their 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 stupidity. Um, no matter, no matter if you, even if you're a World Cup champion, you've got to stay humble. You've got to have your feet on the ground. So um, keep going, don't stop, uh, Michelle. Keep going with with your projects in football. Um, and yeah, I just can't wait to to keep laughing off air right now. So um, <laughs> anything that you'd like to share on your channels, um, please. Now's the moment. If you're on Instagram. Um... If you're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Yeah, I'm Michelle Morris TV on Instagram and YouTube. Um, 
the YouTube channel, I haven't, haven't uploaded anything in a while, but I know we're working on things. Um, and make sure to follow us at the Ladies League. Like, we do a lot of really cool stuff with uh, not just women's football, but men's football, anything that's Australian football related, you know, we're there and, you know, we, we, we do it in a, in a fun way that it's, you know, it's humorous and entertaining and, um, well, at least we hope it is. Uh, but we've got a bunch of videos on TLL TV. So check okay. us out. It's good well, stuff. what is it again? So you can... Um... The Ladies League. Okay. Thank you. And yep. uh, for all of you, um, thanks for your patience. Um, yeah, we're here at Chilean Football TV, Chilean Football News TV, rather. We've got our, um, our subtitles and our working. And um, um, so... People can practice and learn their English um, and obviously in Spanish. So uh, don't forget, again, uh, Chilean Football News. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on, on YouTube. Thank you. Muchas gracias. And uh, I'll see you around the traps. Take care. Stay home. Quédate en casa.